Kero que mi gente, my name is Kevin and today I'm gonna walk you through how to lube your chain. It's super important to maintain your chain well because it's the lifeblood of your bike. If we just boil down what bicycling is on a very basic level, you hop on it, spin your pedals, which then moves you forward. The thing that connects your spinning pedals to you moving forward is your chain. Then on top of that, there's a lot of other things connected to your chain that are much more expensive than a chain that if the chain works well, you can shift well, it'll keep those things healthy and save you some money. To lube your chain, you're going to need two things. Number one is chain lube. Now, it's important to note that this is not the same as something like WD-40 or other lubes. This is specific for a bicycle chain, so it's important that you get something for a bicycle. The second thing is then a rag. Equally as important, you want to make sure that you take off excess lube Otherwise, it's just going to collect a bunch of dirt and prematurely wear down your chain. You can use anything here. It doesn't have to be any special rag. It can be an old t-shirt, it can be an old towel or like a shop towel or something. Now, here's a chain that needs some love. So let's give it to it. I'm gonna start off by grabbing my rag. If you notice here, most chains go through a derailleur and on the derailleur, there are two pulleys. And you see that these little things have teeth that go through each and every single chain link. So what you want to do before you add lube is remove the dirt from these pulleys. You don't have to hold it tight. What you want to do is basically just lightly place it with your two fingers around the pulleys. Grab a spin and look at all this. <laughs> That's gross. That's just one pulley. One thing to watch out for here is this is a bunch of moving parts and depending what kind of rag you're using, it could get sucked into the chain. See this one it got caught there. You wanna make sure not to keep spinning once it gets hard cause then you could potentially, I don't know, rip your rag, damage your chain, get stuff where you don't want it. This one's definitely trickier. You could also just do one side at a time. You got that side, look at that. This is one little side of the cog. And here, maybe a little slower. Side number two. The last one also pretty tricky because you have the pedals in your way. You can still try to get as much of it off as you can. Look at that. That's just one side. This other side we're trying to do. Oh, pick up the back wheel, spin it forward, and then shoot it out. You could also invoke the pinch method. I'm just grabbing, pinching, and pulling. I'm trying to get every single cog I can. This is like pro level care. When you really care about your bike, then you do the pinch method. Hey, if you do invoke the pinch method, let me know in the comments down below. I'll <laughs> give you a high five if I ever meet you. <laughs> Look at everything we just took off of that. This is why you clean it off before you add the loop. That's nasty. Now that the pulleys and the front chain ring is clean, let's get into the lubrication of the chain. The way I do it is a little particular, but I think it's the most beneficial for the chain and the least wasteful. So I take my lube, and I put a drop on each and every single one of these pins of the chain, you know, the little bars that go across. The only spot that needs lube is right here inside of the pin area because that's where the chain rotates and articulates around. So you just want this process to always be nice and smooth as opposed to it being stiff and then messing up as it goes around. To start, I go ahead and try to find the master link in the chain because it's an easy like start and stop point to know when you're done with all the pins. Here we go. You can tell the master link is the one because all the others just look like a hole straight through. This is the only one that has a space for the pin to slide back and open up your chain. Now, not all chains have a master link, and if not, that's perfectly fine. When we get to the point where we take off the excess, it doesn't matter if you hit a few links two times. So I try to position the master link kind of towards the front here as, as far as I can, and then I go and start and just put a drop. As you see, drop, drop. And once you become a pro chain luber, you can start going faster. I'm trying to remember the cog you finished on, which is this one, and then bring it all the way to the front. This is like really satisfying for me, to be completely honest with you. It's fun to be like very particular. You're doing everything that the chain needs before you put it through hell. And you can hear your bike whispering to you. Thank you. And I say, you're welcome. It usually takes about three to four like of those spins 
depending how long your chain is and how big your cassettes are. But it'll only take about a minute or two of doing this. Oh, and there we go. See, so there's the master link. That's an easy way to tell that you're done. So now a very important part, arguably just as important as putting the lube on is taking off the excess. Lube is wet when you first put it on. And if you ride through dirt or anything like that, what most people do on their bikes, it's just going to attract and hold on to that dirt, which then it's gonna work its way into your chain, into your cassette, into your drivetrain, and just do not good things. So now that everything is lubed, you're gonna grab the chain. You see all the spinning that I've done has been backwards because when you pedal forward, it moves the bike forward, so you can't do that stationary. So it's always backwards. But you just grab the chain, not putting a lot of pressure on it, because if you put pressure on it, it's not gonna move. It's just light. You wanna collect any excess lube that worked its way to any other part of the chain except inside of those pins. And then a few spins holding it top and bottom. So the goal is squeeze top and bottom like this, and also on the sides just to collect the excess from any spot. There is no limit to how much you can do this. You could sit here and do this for 20 minutes and you're not over doing anything. Because whatever lube, wherever it needed to get, it's already in there, so you're just taking off any excess. The chain looks new. Look at that, it's like silver again. I don't know if you noticed before, there was some rust spots on it. As long as it's not too rusty, just adding some lube and then wiping off the excess, all the rust will come onto here. You see there's some like orangey spots. So you'll actually take off some of that rust that builds up on it. I usually try to keep one side of the rag that I put onto the chain or anything dirty. And the other side I try to keep clean so my hands don't just get full of the grease. That's the way that I like to lube my chain. Cause again, you saw very little waste. You do exactly what you need to do and no more. And then <laughs> technically we still did extra cause stuff came off. But the way that you'll see a lot of people do it is they open up their chain lube, they spin the chain backwards and just and just spray it all here on the chain, which yeah, in theory, you're getting everything that you need to, but what we did is just spray a ton of chain lube all over the cassette into a bunch of spots on the chain that it didn't need, and now all of that is the potential just to collect dirt. So if you take a look here, you see now how several different cogs, these little things that have all the pins up, how several of those cogs are now all wet. All of that brings the opportunity to just grab more dirt like this. And you're just trying to minimize the amount of dirt and stuff that gets into this whole drivetrain because less dirt means a better drivetrain. Now, in terms of how often you should lube your chain, that varies a little bit, but I had a mechanic tell me every 30 to 40 miles. So you can either keep track of every 30 to 40 miles. I generally like to do it before every ride. If I can, especially if I'm on a bike packing trip, I definitely do it before every single day. A lot of bike packing trips are off road which means it's just more dirt in the air and more stuff that collects on your chain. So the more often you can cycle all of that old dirt, old grease out and put new stuff in, the better for the chain. If your bicycle hasn't been ridden in a while, like this one hasn't, check out our other video where we talk through some other things that you can check on your bike before going out for a ride. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the REI channel if you haven't yet. And hasta la próxima, mi gente, nos vemos. That chain is wildly different. Maybe we should go ride it, give us some love. Now that's a brand new chain. We need a bike that'll fit you though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>